Hey everyone, it's B, and you're listening to another episode of the In Your Feelings podcast. So for those of you who are new here, In Your Feelings is a podcast I created with Thought Catalog that dives into the very real and, as I say every week, very messy aspects of life that we are all navigating. I create these episodes just to have honest conversations about things like relationships and moving on and worthiness, things that can feel quite disheartening and confusing and I do it in the hopes that within these 30 minutes or so you feel less alone in what you're feeling and you're reminded that you aren't the only person in the world who is dealing with certain things in life. And so with that being said, today we're going to be talking about relationships but more so about the beliefs that we associate so deeply with relationships that we think are constructive, but that can actually be toxic. As someone who is the first to admit that I tend to romanticize certain aspects of love, I have said it time and time again, it has taken a long time to understand that some of the approaches I've had to relationships or some of the beliefs I've associated with them have actually been holding me back and keeping me from experiencing the kind of love that is secure and beautiful and transformative. You know, the kind of love that I talk about, the kind of love that I've been putting my heart into the world to find. But sometimes you don't realize that a belief is toxic until it's expressed in that way or your eyes are open to maybe a more broad or more compassionate point of view and that's why I wanted to create this podcast episode and the truth is I mean just to preface this having some of these beliefs and approaching relationships with these ideas in your mind of what they should be or what love should look like and so on is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of to feel guilty about and This is because we've all grown up in a society that has showcased a very specific kind of love to each and every one of us. We've grown up with movies and cultural representations of what love is meant to look like. We've grown up with so much access to media that perpetuates and romanticizes love in certain ways. And then on the other hand of it, vilifies certain things and and puts other traits or other qualities or other actions on a pedestal so it creates this divide and it can be really hard to pull our hearts and our mind out of that even when some of those things are toxic ideals you know ideals that aren't really rooted in human relationships but rather romanticized or toxic relationships for example Some of the beliefs we'll be diving deeply into is the belief that love should be easy or the belief that love and love alone is enough or that the people we care about should just immediately know how to love us. They should just immediately know what our needs are if they are the right person and so on. These are real beliefs that I think a lot of us still approach love with and by laying them out here today, I hope I can help you to dig a little deeper and to maybe see things from a different perspective and to maybe understand how these beliefs could be toxic or self-sabotaging because they aren't helping you or leading you towards the beauty you want to feel but rather they're holding you back from it. And so the first toxic belief about love is that it should be easy. That you won't have to work for something that is real and pointed and beautiful. That the right kind of love just connects. That it is just a seamless experience you have in your life. 
But that isn't the case. Because real love is work. Real love is work not only between you and another human being, but within yourself as well. Real love is gritty and it is messy at times and it can be hard. It won't always be perfect because we as human beings are not perfect. We are real. And with the reality of life and loss and trauma and internal growth and hardships and all of the things this world tries to weather us with, it's, it's toxic to believe that love is going to be faultless. Don't get me wrong. Love should not be the main source of confusion or hurt or disappointment or pain in your life. Love is not meant to be daunting or exhausting. You know that I believe this deeply. Love should be your safe place. But in order to make it your safe place, you will have to work to get there. And you will have to understand that a safe place doesn't mean a perfect place. Because as I've said before, love is never going to be faultless and it is never going to be perfect. It will always take work. And sometimes, sometimes you are going to experience days where love is just ease and it's light and sunny and I'm smiling when I say this, but it's light and sunny and you feel so much beauty washing over you and you're laughing for 10 minutes straight with someone you care about and, and everything is blooming in the direction of hope and beauty. And, and then there are going to be days where love feels a little heavy, where the realities of life get in the way, where money or trauma or sickness or mental health can take a toll where you need to work a little harder to choose someone where you unhinge your rib cage and you have to show them the really messy corners of your soul the parts of yourself no one else claps for and you're terrified and that is okay that is human that is so, so real. And, and the kind of love that works to nurture you there, the kind of love that thrives within the good and that withstands the bad and grows in the bad, that's special. And that's pointed. So no, love is never going to be perpetually easy and it shouldn't be perpetually bad either. Finding something that blooms within the middle ground. Finding the kind of love that wants to do the work. That wants to nurture a connection. That wants to meet each challenge with strength. That wants to transform and evolve and take on the world in both the light and the dark. That is something worth believing in. The kind of love that exists within this notion of perfection, within this notion of pure ease 100% of the time is also the kind of love that's going to crumble at the first sign of danger. It will say, oh no, love isn't meant to be like this. Love is meant to be easy. This must not be my person. And, and that isn't the kind of love that you want or the kind of love you deserve. Okay, so moving on to my second example. Another toxic belief about love that, that kind of relates to the previous one I mentioned is that love is the only thing you need in a relationship. And I mean, this is something <laughs> that is hard for me to say because as a hopeless romantic, I. I do still kind of hold on to this belief that if you have love, you have everything you need. 
but I have felt deeply for people and I have loved people who just were never going to be the human beings I needed or that I could love correctly in whatever season of life I was in at the time that I tried to crash my heart into them. And that is really, really difficult to admit. We think if we have love that we have all the tools we need in order to create the kind of relationship and commitment that lasts. But the truth is, Sometimes you can love someone so deeply. I mean, from the deepest part of who you are. And that still doesn't mean that they are good for you. You can love someone so much. You can care for them as if it were an extension of yourself, but that isn't enough. It isn't enough. Because a healthy, beautiful relationship is something you have to choose every single day. It's something you have to work within. You can love someone and that is a beautiful foundation, but in a relationship you also need communication, mutual respect, Aligned beliefs, you know, you you have to want the same things. You have to have the same version of what your future looks like in the realm of your relationship at least because if you don't, if you fundamentally want different things, there will always be a disconnect or a block. Fostering love in a relationship is Stunning. It's literally everything I believe in. But there needs to be the desire to grow, both within the relationship and outside of it. And there has to be a respect for that growth and an understanding of it and a dedication to it, a celebration of it. So no, love is is not enough. The belief that it is, can sometimes cause us to dismiss very, very clear red flags or or very foundational breaks because we care deeply about someone. And sometimes when we love someone from the deepest part of our soul, we, we convince ourselves that things are okay, that the things they do that hurt us or the things that we don't necessarily align with are okay because there's love there. And so sometimes we let people hurt us because we love them. Sometimes we let people disappoint us because we love them. And sometimes we stay when we know we should leave because we love a human being. Sometimes we lose ourselves trying so, so hard to make things connect. To just make them work. To just fight to keep all of the incompatibilities in check because We love someone. But love is not enough. Sometimes things just don't connect. Sometimes you don't beat the odds. Sometimes no matter how deeply you care, no matter how much you try, you have to walk away. You have to lay down your arms. All right. So I think another really toxic belief that we romanticize sometimes is that people will just know how to love us the way we need to be loved. That they will come into our lives and they will know how to take care of us, how to nurture us, how to be there for us. And this is something, I think this is the thing that is most deeply sold to us. 
in a way, it becomes the defining point for connection. This knowing someone who just sees us, someone who just knows our soul. And I do think that is a form of deep connection. But I think it's toxic to believe that it's something that simply just thrives immediately rather than something that is fostered over time. The truth is we all come into relationships with our own needs, our own traumas, our own experiences of love, our own pasts, our own baggage as some call it. And no matter how deeply similar we feel to another human being, we are all unique, like fingerprints, due to the way life has weathered us, due to the things we have been through, the different forms of growth we have experienced, and so on and so on. And therefore, to assume that someone will just know that we are upset or to think that someone will just know how to care for us on our worst days or to think that someone will just be able to tell when we are stressed or overwhelmed or happy or making an effort that's toxic instead we have to communicate these things we have to understand that we teach people how to love us and we have to set them up for success within our hearts. We have to say, I actually don't like when you do that. Or we have to say, when I'm upset, I, I actually need X from you rather than Y. When we don't communicate these things, we can foster resentment for this person because we think they should just know how to hold us at our worst or celebrate us at our best or that they should just know when we are mad or anxious or whatever. But when we let go of that toxic belief, we understand that, as I said before, We have the capacity and the responsibility to teach people how to love us. Human beings are not mind readers. We have to be honest about what makes us feel loved, about what hurts us, about what we need. We have to be open and vulnerable and show ourselves in order for another person to truly, truly be able to see us. And with that being said, we also can't assume that people will love us the way that we love. But that doesn't mean that there isn't love there. And that does not mean that someone will not work to try to love you correctly. But if they fundamentally show their love differently and you do not communicate how you receive love, then you will always see their efforts as lacking. When in reality, they might be trying very hard on their own terms and in their own eyes. Sometimes we think love looks a very, very specific way. And when someone doesn't offer that very specific kind of love to us, we might think, well, this person isn't trying. But sometimes what looks like love to you is not what looks like love to the person that you care for. Communicating this to one another, saying, when I do this, I'm showing you that I love you. But I understand if you need something different. So how can I show up for you? What makes you feel nurtured? What makes you feel special? It becomes an education point. 
an invitation to learn and do the work, and that is really special. Instead of getting upset that this human being doesn't know how to love you in a way that you recognize, I have to add that. Ask yourself, have you told them how to love you? Have you connected that way? And this is all to say, have you expressed your needs? If you haven't, you can't expect someone to show up for you in ways you've never communicated. They will, they will show up the best way they know how, the way that they view effort, the way that they view love. And as I said before, we are all different, and so that isn't bad. At the end of the day, the right person will make the effort to understand the language your heart speaks. The right person may not immediately know your cues, what your needs are, how you show love, how you express yourself. But the right person will take the time to learn you. The right person will take the time to make the effort. And that is what is special. And that is what is formative. And that is what you need to seek. Someone who is fundamentally just willing to listen, willing to learn, willing to put in the effort. You have to uphold your part of the deal and stop believing that they will just know and rather teach them how to love you and go from there. Whew, I have so many more examples, but within romantic love, those were the main things that resonated most with me when I really started digging into my personal approach to relationships. I learned a lot about how I might have been holding myself back by believing so deeply in the things that I was taught or that I saw in the movies or the way love was <laughs> perpetuated in popular culture and, and challenging those beliefs and seeing them as, as toxic, as maybe allowing my heart to mature a little more or have my eyes opened I was able to see a more human, more realistic, and still equally as beautiful definition of love grow within me. There, there is one last thing that I just, <laughs> I have to say because it's me. There's one last toxic belief I want to add into this podcast, and that is less about relationships with other people and more about the relationship that you foster within yourself and within the world around you. And this toxic belief is that romantic love is the most important kind of love in our lives. And don't get me wrong, listen, <laughs> If you have listened to my podcast for even a few episodes, you know that I have a heart that cherishes romantic connections. I, I pour myself out for them. I, I think falling in love is beautiful. I think it is a form of magic in this world. But there was a point in my life where all I wanted was that where my definition of love existed solely within this notion that I was going to find it in another human being rather than within myself and within the world around me. The truth is, love exists in so much more than just a romantic partner. Love is everything around you. And I hope you learn how to open your eyes to that. I hope you find love in every aspect of your life. I hope you find it tucked into 
early morning sunrises and the smell of your favorite places. I hope you find it strung between the laughter you share with your friends. I hope it bounces off of you when you hug the people you care for. I hope it swells within your rib cage whenever you hear your favorite song or discover something that moves you. I hope you fall in love with growth and change and the messiness and the beauty of messing up and making mistakes and becoming exactly who you want to be. I hope you find love in places that were once void of it. In places within yourself that you could have been softer to. Kinder to in the past. Because if there is one thing I have learned, it is that love is so, so much more than a boy or a girl who holds your heart. Love is everything around you. It is everything. If there is any toxic belief, if there is any (laughs) perpetuated concept of love that makes you think otherwise, then I hope that is the one you take the time to work on healing the most. Because the love that you find within yourself will be yours forever and that is just a different kind of beauty in this world and on that note i will see all of you next week as always i love hearing your feedback and i read all of your emails and all of your messages on instagram and thought catalog does as well and they really really empower these episodes and inspire them but they also really make me feel very seen and very heard in what I want to put out into the world and it's nice to know that all of you are relating to and resonating with and feeling the same things that I'm feeling and so I just want to say that I'm so thankful to have all of you here and I can't wait to continue this podcast and I can't wait to put more episodes out for you. So until then, I hope you're all staying so safe out there and I hope you know that you are so unbelievably loved and that you are so needed here.